Last time in the series, we covered NASCAR Heat Evolution, a game hated by many upon release. The bad taste left from the game led to many people not looking forward to the next few games from Monster Games and Duesenberry Martin Racing. But it wasn't Duesenberry Martin Racing anymore, likely an attempt to get a new image to combat the criticism that both NASCAR 15 and NASCAR Heat Evolution received, they changed their name to 704 Games. I feel like the poor reception to Heat Evolution made Monster Games and 704 start playing catch-up to the EA games. Lucky for them, that is exactly what the fans wanted. So when it was first announced that NASCAR's Xfinity and Truck Series were making their first appearance in a NASCAR game since NASCAR 09, people got extremely hyped for Heat 2. So the community was hyped for Heat 2, but what about me? Well, I was 10 years old and not allowed to access most of the internet, so I couldn't get swept up in the hype. I found out about this game through an ad I saw on NASCAR Heat Mobile, another pretty bad game, even for mobile devices. Because I was so young and dumb, I thought it was an ad for a new mobile game, so I rushed out of my room and to my mom, begging her to let me get the game when it came out, and I later found out that it was in fact not a mobile game. But I was really happy that they were making a sequel to Heat Evolution, because at the time, I still really enjoyed that game. This time, however, I had to rely on my local library buying the game for their collection to play it. I remember watching races with my mom and asking her every week if they had gotten Heat 2 yet. Eventually, she got tired of my complaining and brought me to the library to ask them when they were getting it. Somehow, I convinced them to buy the game for their collection, and eventually, they got it after the end of the 2017 season. So, I am the sole reason my library has a copy of NASCAR Heat 2. Of course, I later bought the game on PS4, and even later, on PC. So, was everyone's hype justified? That's what we will find out over the course of this review. Just like the last review, I will be dividing this one up into four categories. Game modes, gameplay, graphics, and sound. Let's get right into it. With the addition of the Xfinity and Truck series, the career mode obviously needed to be changed. So what they did with it here was unique. Instead of doing it how EA did it with you jumping right in with a full-time contract in the lowest series, they have you start out as a substitute driver, hopping from car to car, from lower tier rides to higher tier ones, before eventually signing a full-time contract. It's very unique and something I do like the idea of. The substitute driver system here is referred to as Hot Seat. Each team you drive for has a goal finishing position and a payout for completing that objective. At the end of the season, hot seating, you get offers to drive full time for each team that you achieved a goal for. You can take over any car from that team or you can add your own entry under their banner which uses whatever car you make through the paint booth. I like this too because it allows more creativity from the player. There's still a problem with taking over someone else's ride though. That driver just vanishes and their name is still on the banner. You've probably looked at the footage so far and said, man, this guy must really love Chase Briscoe, but that's just me taking over his truck. I do really like Chase Briscoe though. While it's a minor gripe, it's still something I am not too fond of. Due to the system and the addition of the two series to the game, the career mode ends up being very long. In six hours, I made it through the first season of Heat Evolution's career mode on the minimum race length. Here, still on the minimum length, I made it about halfway through the first full season in the truck series. According to Steam, 6.3% of people made it to the Cup series, which is still more than I expected, but it's still not good. For some reason, they brought money into this career mode, even though you can't create a team or buy a team at any point. Fans are also still here, and they still don't do anything. Like, damn, at least make them bitch on social media like they do in real life. Speaking of social media, we see that in the career mode here. Drivers in your series, or big stars in the Cup series, will make posts and videos congratulating you on accomplishments or condemning you for on-track actions. Congrats on your first truck race! I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do this season. You really suck. One truck series win is rookie numbers. Try again, fucko. The social media posts are nice, but the videos are great to have. The fact that they got videos for a good amount of drivers in each series is really nice, and they they're definitely more personal than text on a screen. Man, Christopher Bell said that about me? 
they added a stats feature that keeps track of your career stats across all three series, which is a nice addition. I wish they had a season by season tracker like the EA games had, but this is still nice. Another feature they tried to bring in from those EA games is the ally rifle system. Well, more like half of it. For some unknown reason, they figured that they should only bring in the rivals part of allies and rivals. So each driver either doesn't really care about you or they really hate you. One last thing to cover on the career mode is the difficulty. A lot of people complained about it when the game came out and I think it's fair criticism. The career mode here is a lot easier than Heat Evolutions, which is a good thing in my opinion, but they just made it too damn easy. Choosing a 5 star contract is essentially easy mode on any difficulty. I had to pick the hard difficulty for my truck series contract with Brad Kozlowski Racing just to keep myself from handily winning every race and switch it to normal for my Xfinity hot seat offers to beat the goal. Even then, I still blew away and won a few Xfinity races with 3 and 4 star contracts. I know it's a bit weird to be going over this here instead of in the gameplay section, but the modern NASCAR Heat games have entirely different difficulty settings for career modes compared to the other modes, so I kinda have to cover it here. Well, career mode isn't the only mode returning here, we also have challenges, championship mode, quick race, and online multiplayer. We also have two new additions, split screen multiplayer, and the paint booth, although the latter isn't really a mode, but I'll still cover it here. First one to tackle is split screen multiplayer. I was hoping to show this to you through Steam Remote Play because I've used it on Heat 4's local multiplayer before to play with friends, but it isn't compatible here. Next up is the paint booth, which is alright. It's far from the paint booth featured in Eutechnics games, especially NASCAR 15, where you could create some really good looking paint schemes with. This is pretty similar to EA's paint booth in that you can only recolor a base paint scheme and add sponsors to it. Here we have very few sponsors, and about half the sponsor logos here are just recolored versions of another logo. As part of the paint booth, you can customize your own driver that's used in all modes with your custom scheme and career mode as a whole. I made an 1800s villain as my character. The fact that you can use your car across any mode, even career mode, is very nice, and even though it's lacking in pure paint booth features, the functionality across the game makes it worthwhile in my opinion. The quick race and championship modes are largely unchanged from Heat Evolution, and I can't cover the online multiplayer because the servers were shut down and I don't like online games. The challenges mode also returns from the previous game, but is better in my opinion. Instead of being presented with a driver photo and a paragraph for each challenge, you now get a fully narrated intro with pictures of the real life situation it's based on. There is about one scenario per track in the game here, and they don't fo focus solely on the Cup Series guys here. There's also some Truck Series and Xfinity Series challenges. Also, unlike that game with the words Heat and Evolution in the title, all the challenges are unlocked from the start here. Overall, I think they did a really good job increasing what they have to offer here. While there are some flaws here and there that need addressing, it's better offering than what we got in the last iteration. However, the career mode is not does not have enough variety and it's not deep enough and it brings my score here down to 7 out of 10. Moving on now to the gameplay. Seeing as how they improved upon Heat Evolution's game modes, they must have done great new things with gameplay, right? No, it's almost the exact same as the year before. I think the only difference I felt was that the car can snap loose a bit when breaking into the corner. Since it's so similar, I'm just going to end my evaluation here and say go watch my Heat Evolution review if you want my in-depth opinions on the gameplay. I'm just going to give this a 5 out of 10 though instead of a 7 out of 10 because it's just the same damn thing. Now onto the main thing people hated about Evolution, the graphics. They look slightly better here, but not a ton. They removed the charm that I enjoyed about the main menu in NASCAR 2016 Evolution of the Heat. No, it's just a looping video clip in the background, and it's just not that charming. So what about those neat 3D models of trophies you got in NASCAR Frostbite Evolution? Well, they replaced it with a Victory Lane celebration. While it's a neat addition, it's not the best. It's five video clips of your car in Victory Lane, with the last one looping until you exit out. Sound on it, is just a five second loop of a cheering crowd that gives me war flashbacks. The 
The damage model is definitely much better than what it was previously, with damage actually showing up on the car in pronounced ways. Finally, they figured out how to do a damage model. Ah, shit, what else is different here? Uh, I guess the game doesn't look like complete ass for night races? Yeah, not a ton of differences from NASCAR Heat Legend of the Evolution, so I'll give them a 5 out of 10 here. Sound. I honestly can't tell if they recorded new sounds for the truck series or if it's just the same ones from Kyle Petty's No Fear NASCAR Heat Evolution, but pitch shifted lower. But they use the truck sounds for the Xfinity series for some reason. So most of what I enjoyed from the sound department in the previous entry was the soundtrack, which is not the case here. They went for licensed music, and I've never really liked it. I've never liked about half the catalog here, and they never included an option to turn off specific tracks, so I usually find myself playing with music turned off. Seeing as how I'm not really impressed with anything in the sound department, this one's getting a 3 out of 10. Well, those are my scores here. Graphics, gameplay, and sound were kind of left behind during development to focus on the game modes. And while the improvements in game modes are great, there isn't really a good foundation in those three departments for them to stand up on. I suppose it's somewhat excusable since they had two series to add, but they could have done it better. So my final overall score for this game. This game ends up with a even 5 out of 10 for mediocrity. This game is definitely better than NASCAR Heat Stroke, but we're not at the point yet where I trust these devs with my children. People didn't like Heat 2 when it came out but there was much less of a negative reaction compared to the one that, that one game from 2016 that has NASCAR and nothing to do with Evolution. No, not the Forza Motorsport 6 NASCAR expansion. People were still disappointed, sure, but they were either numb to it or were happy with some progress being made. Let's hope that that progress continues come the 2018 season with NASCAR Heat 3.